Thanks for taking the time to learn more about the I-65 Safety and Efficiency Project. We recently held a public hearing, and this short presentation is a chance to learn more about the project, the formal comment period that runs through August 9th, and next steps for the project. I'm John LeBlanc, the project manager for the I-65 Safety and Efficiency Project. I'm with Parsons, the lead project development and design firm. And I'm Mindy Peterson, also with Parsons. I'm the Public Involvement Director. We'll talk about a few things during this presentation. We'll give you an overview of the recent hearing, as well as an overview of the project. John is going to talk more about the improvements that are planned, along with the environmental impacts of the project. And we'll wrap up by talking about next steps. Let's start with our recent hearing. We held a public hearing for the project on July 24th at Frederick Douglass Super School 19 here in Indianapolis. The hearing was an open house format with project team members available for discussions and one-on-one -on -one conversations. We also had a presentation which covered the information that you're hearing about now. And we had a formal comment period where people could sign up and have up to three minutes for any verbal comments on the project. The formal comment period is associated with what we call the draft environmental document for the project. That's a lengthy document that details recommended improvements, impacts, and the work of the project team as it evaluated those alternatives and impacts. The comment period started July 9th when the draft environmental document was posted to the project website. Several copies were made available at multiple locations, and a legal notice and hearing release were shared with the public. The comment period runs through Friday, August 9th, and you can share comments on the project website, i65safetyandefficiency.com, by reaching out to ndot for you or by mailing in your comments. Responses to comments received by August 9th will be included in the final environmental document for the project. And now I'm going to turn things over to John, who's going to tell you more about the project and the improvements planned. Thanks, Mindy. I'll start with an overview of the I-65 Safety and Efficiency Project. The purpose and need is important. It's the why for the project. The need for the I-65 Safety and Efficiency Project stems from the current and projected congestion during peak hours and the current pavement condition along this section of I-65, along with the current condition of the existing bridges in the area. The purpose of the project is detailed on this slide. As an overview, we want to reduce corridor congestion, extend the life of the pavement and bridges, improve drainage along the corridor, and improve pedestrian facilities. The I-65 safety and efficiency basically runs from I-465 on the south side to the south split. It's nearly a five mile corridor. We're focusing on adding capacity, bridge improvements, pavement patching and resurfacing, drainage improvements, and sidewalk improvements. The map you see here can also be downloaded on the project website or you can zoom in while on the website to see the map with more detail. We plan to add a lane between I-465 and I-70 to help ease congestion during those peak hours. When complete, I-65 in this area will be four lanes in each direction. The pavement already exists for most of the improvements. We'll be using the existing inside shoulder for most of the widening. For the southern third of the project, so down by I-465 to just north of Keystone, will be widening to the outside of the existing lanes. Let's take a closer look now at the improvements planned for the bridges. Northbound bridges will be widened and improved at three locations, Naomi, Pleasant Run, and Morrison Prospect. This is to accommodate the fourth travel lane that we will be adding along the corridor. We will also be rehabilitating the I-65 northbound bridge over Morrison Prospect. This includes replacing the superstructure with new beams and a new deck for the bridge, along with the widening we mentioned previously. We will rehabilitate the Morrison Prospect Bridge over I-65 southbound. It will accommodate 10-foot sidewalks on both sides of the bridge. We will also do overlay work on 18 other bridges along the corridor to extend their life. Hannah Avenue will get a new bridge to accommodate the outside winding occurring on I-65. The replacement bridge will feature a 6-foot sidewalk along the north side and a 10-foot shared use path along the south side of the bridge. That will accommodate a future pedestrian pathway that is planned for this corridor. Moving on to other improvements. We will be patching the pavement and resurfacing along the corridor. In the asphalt section or the HMA section, which is that darker pavement material, that is where the added travel lane will be added to the inside. When we do that, we will remove the top layer and put a new layer on. In addition to adding the inside travel lane, we will be adding new drainage structures. 
We added sidewalk improvements throughout the corridor of the project based on feedback we received from the public and stakeholders. Improvements will include new lighting, some new sidewalks, replacing broken sidewalk panels, and other sidewalks will be leveled. We will also evaluate and improve ADA ramps as necessary. We're improving the sidewalk within NDOT right of way. We know you care about how your commute will be affected by construction. We work hard to develop a plan to best maintain traffic during construction. Two lanes of I-65 are expected to be open in both directions most of the time, with the exception of an occasional week enclosure. We anticipate up to three week enclosures on I-65 in each direction at the discretion of the contractor for construction. You can also expect the Morrison Prospect Bridge over I-65 southbound to be closed up to 30 days and the Hannah Avenue overpass bridge to be closed up to a year as we replace it with a new bridge. We will maintain at least one lane on I-65 northbound over Morrison Prospect at all times, except during those occasional week enclosures. We also expect some short-term ramp closures during construction. Moving on to impacts. Part of the work we do is identify all impacts associated with the project. You will see them outlined in detail in the environmental document. They are pretty minimal with just over a half acre of tree clearing, only temporary impacts to Pleasant Run Trail, and less than three acres of wetlands impacted. You can also read about mitigation in the environmental document, which is posted to the project website. We have 14 historic properties identified within the project corridor, but there are no adverse effects to any of those 14. The Section 106 document is also available for review and comment with comments accepted through Friday, August 9th. There's a very prescribed process for the proposed noise barriers. First, a traffic noise impact study was completed. We had noise barriers proposed at seven locations. We held a noise meeting last year to gather feedback and sent multiple questionnaires to impacted receptors. Based on community feedback and the noise analysis, a barrier is expected at one location, which is northbound barrier one. The barrier is along I-65 northbound on the southeast portion of the corridor north of Hannah Avenue. The complete noise report is available for review on the website. You'll find it with the project documents. I'm now going to hand things back to Mindy to wrap up with next steps. Thanks, John. And we will talk about those next steps and that ongoing comment period that we've talked about. As far as timeline and what to expect, we anticipate having the final environmental document complete late this year. In that final document, you will see responses to the comments received during the formal comment period. We anticipate construction starting next spring in 2025, and construction is expected to last two years. We encourage you to follow our progress to stay up to date on what's happening now and as we move to construction. You'll find a lot of information, including that draft environmental document, on the project website, i65safetyandefficiency.com. While on the website, you can sign up for project updates by email. You can also sign up to receive text updates. That information is on your screen. And of course, we encourage you to follow us on our social media channels, Facebook and X. It's a great way to make sure that you know what's happening and you are able to stay in touch with us. Now, we've talked a lot about the draft environmental document. It's a very detailed and thorough document that basically details all of the work and analysis on the project. It's nearly 900 pages with all of the appendices, but there is a table of contents that will direct you to any specific information that you might be looking for. In addition to being posted on the project website, we have a hard copy available for review at area locations. The Garfield Park Library, Southeast Community Services, the Tube Factory, Frederick Douglass Super School 19, and at the NDOT Greenfield office. The formal comment period associated with the environmental document started July 9th. We had a project release and legal notice to let people know the draft document was available for review, and we also shared that information on the project website and social channels. People could sign up to share verbal comments at the public hearing that we held in July, and they also had a comment form available to them. You can share your comments on the project website, i65safetyandefficiency.com, by mail or by calling NDOT for you, and making sure that you reference the I-65 Safety and Efficiency Project. More information is available on the project website, and please make sure that you share any comments by August 9, 2024. Thanks for taking the time to learn more about I-65 Safety and Efficiency.